We have all these rock star speakers, but the best speaker is the one who gives the shortest <laughs> talk. So I'm going to really cut down 90% of my talk and hit home what the key message with this particular talk is about radioisotope targeting of neuroendocrine tumors. You guys have heard about PRRT and Lutathera all day, but some of you all might not have uh, kind of known what's the basic premise of the therapy is and why do we do Lutathera? Why is it such a game changer? So um, this is going to be a quick crash course on that. So Theranostics is that evolving field of science where we use a small amount of radioactive uh, uh, heavy metal attached to a particular drug which then attaches to the tumor and both diagnoses as well as treats the tumor. What do I mean? For example, let's take an example of neuroendocrine tumor. We all know neuroendocrine tumor have somatostatin receptor, right? So if so we have a drug which likes to go to somatostatin receptor, consider somatostatin receptor like a lock. And we have a drug, for example, sandostatin, which is like a key, likes to go and join the lock, right? Now, what if we attach a keychain to the key, and this keychain is a nuclear bomb, a radioactive compound, like a heavy metal, lutetium-177. So if we inject that drug now, the key is going to find the lock, that is the tumor, and it's dragging the keychain with it. That is the nuclear warhead. So we are able to, with precision, irradiate just the tumor and save the normal tissue, right? So when we do conventional radiation therapy, for example, if I have a patient with a tumor in the chest and we do radiation, we try our best to just radiate tumor, but there is a lot of normal tissue in front of it, behind it. So there is collateral damage. But in this particular way of radiating tumor, it's called precision way of radiating tumor, the, the radiation is only going to tumor cells because we have a target. And these targets would change with the tumors. For NETS, the target is somatostatin receptors. For prostate cancer, we have a target PSMA. And this field is evolving. We are finding targets for breast cancer, colon cancer, pancreas cancer. This field is just scratching the surface, going to blow up big time in uh, times to come. But today's talk is about NETS, and this particular talk is about Lutathera, the only FDA-approved PRRT treatment for NETS right now. So I'm just going to give you a very brief rundown on that. This particular agent got FDA approval based on a very important study, which was done in eight countries, about 41 centers, and it was called NETTER-1. We have, again, Markey Cancer Center had a presence there, okay, in this very important pivotal trial. One of our uh, physician, Dr. Ed Wolin, who was at Markey, now at uh, Mount Sinai, was one of the investigators, and Dr. Lowell Anthony uh, was one of the four data safety monitor for this important study. What is Lutathera? Some of you all know this. You're getting this drug. Some of you have heard about it, not yet gotten it. So Lutathera is a, an IV drug that we administer this radiopharmaceutical through IV, 30 minutes infusion. But it needs to be given in presence of amino acid infusion to protect the kidney, so, and that amino acid infusion is about four hours. Okay? So the whole thing is four hours. And it is given every two months for the maximum of four doses. Okay? Very nice in that sense because it is very limited dosing and it's conveniently placed every two months. So in this particular study, the treatment arm got four doses of lutathera, as I mentioned. Each dose is 200 millicuries. Um, and the control arm got higher dose of somatostatin analog. Right? These are the patients who had already progressed on sandostatin. So the sandostatin worked well and eventually stopped working. What to do next? And next was uh, half the patients got Lutathera, and other half got, we couldn't do just nothing. That's not fair to patients. So at that time, the best standard care, because of lack of good treatment option, was, okay, let's double up the dose of standostatin. We've got to do something. We can't have nothing, right? Primary objective was to look for how well the drug works to stabilize the cancer. And then we looked at a lot of secondary objectives, the effect on quality of life, overall survival, and other things. Um, and 
the key here, inclusion criteria, this, this study was designed for small bowel neuronicin tumors, not lung nets, not pancreas, and other subgroup of nets. However, fortunately, the approval was granted for both mid-gut or small bowel nets and pancreatic nets. I wish it was even broader, but you know, FDA have their own thought processes. Now we have a lung net study evaluating Dutathera, so hopefully we'll see some progress there. The treatment arms between the study, Lutathera, as well as control group, the guys who got high dose of cyanocytin, very, very similar. This is done to show that there was no bias. Okay, we were comparing apples to apples, and the only difference was one was getting Lutathera and other was not. And what we saw is this, and you've seen this slide in a couple of previous presentations. Let me tell you, as a medical oncologist trained in various cancers, but now folks in nets, this is as good as it gets, guys, in terms of systemic therapy. This Kaplan marker, which shows us how long does it take for tumor to progress. This, the, the bottom line is the control arm, the one who got high dose of sandostatin. The top arm, the green, is the lutathera arm. Okay? And these are so spaced apart. That means the lutathera patients had stable disease for a really, really long time. In fact, when they published this publication in 2018, the Lutathera arm, they didn't even reach the median, and control arm, 8.5 months. We now have long-term data which shows the study arm is about 29 months. So compare 29 months of disease stabilization versus 8.5 months. This is, again, as good as it gets. Based on this data, FDA approved the use of PRT in the United States. Not too far back, I had patients in Louisiana LSU during my residency who used to travel all the way to Europe to get this drug because it was not approved. So trials like these made it possible for patients to get it here in the United States. Um, again, a big win. And this is the latest tool in our toolkit. We made some progress, right? Over the years, these are all FDA approved drugs in neuroendocrine tumor space. And as the time is progressing, we are developing better, safer uh, drugs, more efficacious drugs. So the field is definitely moving forward. This particular drug is not only efficacious, but it's also very well tolerated in terms of side effect profiles. That's very important to always know what we are buying into. So efficacy is important, but quality of life is also equally important. And what we saw is most patients tolerate uh, Lutathera very well. There is some blood counts, uh, suppression, myelosuppression, there was concern for kidneys, but it turned out to be the kidneys tolerate this drug very well. And uh, there could be some nausea and vomiting. However, the amino acid formulation we use now in real world is very less emetogenic, rarely causes nausea. Then Dr. Strasberg from Moffitt, he did updated analysis of Netter 1 study, and what we found that the quality, there was tremendous benefit in the quality of life. You name it, fatigue, pain, overall general f uh, health, patients showed benefit with Lutathera as compared to the control group. And most recently, we now have more than five years of follow-up data on these uh, trial patients, and what we found that overall survival for Lutathera arm was 48 months, and the control arm was 36.3 months. Now, the big caveat here is that is very clinically meaningful for our patient. This is hard endpoint, overall survival, not disease stabilization. This is the length, longevity, right? So this is certainly a, a significant improvement, clinically beneficial, but not statistically significant. And there's a whole uh, lecture on that I can give you. But why did that happen? Why wasn't it statistically significant? Because patients who were on sandostatin arm at progression, it is only fair that they should get Lutathera. So 36% of patients in the control or placebo arm, uh, sorry, uh, sandostatin arm, got Lutathera at progression. So that nullified that overall survival because eventually everybody's sort of getting it or at least a lot of patients are getting it, right? So that was it. So the quick punchline is lutetium 177 dotatate is currently the only FDA-approved PRRT agent for progressive gastroenteropancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. However, the field, this is just starting, and there are a lot of other agents coming into this uh, party, alpha particles, other agents like Lutathera, 
uh, and you will see uh, a lot of stuff moving. Just a quick glimpse into the future, since this is our meeting, NCAN Lexington. We have been doing some fantastic work in terms of advancing Lutathera, making it even better in terms of disease stabilization shrinking cap capability. Again, these are trials, these are our hypotheses. Let's see if we can prove them to be true. And we are doing these multi-center studies, uh, studies which we started, started in our labs, then, then into our phase one clinic, and now moving to, so the various combinations. Again, I'm going to zip through this. This is our phase one group where we do first in human combination clinical trials. Uh, this is one of our, my first patients, and you call it beginner's luck. First patient shows 35% disease shrinkage. To see disease shrinkage is not common in NETS patient, right? We know most of our treatments are cytostatic. They are keep the disease stable. So anytime I see 35% shrinkage in a grade one or low grade NET patients, that's very promising. Can we then now translate this into a, a, a more consistent pattern that most patients have been? we yet to be seen, okay? Uh, we will update you. So we have multiple trials. So how these trials are developed, we test them in our mouse model so that you can see a neuroendocrine tumor. This is a pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor growing in the thigh under the skin in the mice. And then this is our team. That's the irradiator where we radiate these mice in the background. And it, it's years of work, right? We started that project in 2018. Look at this. When we added this new drug, Piposertib, was shipped to us from Germany in 2018 works wonder, works like a charm, at least in our preclinical model. Now, this is exciting enough to move it to phase one, and which we did, and we got an award from NCI to, to do this work, and this study is currently enrolling. It's, the drug's called Piposertib. Uh, I don't have data yet that I can share, but in about a year, we will, we will see how well this is going. And then we have other study where we're combining Xermelo, the drug we talked in our last lecture, we believe that Zervalo has a proven track record in carcinoid syndrome diarrhea management, but can it also have cytostatic effect? Remember we talked about how serotonin can play a role in making tumors a little bit more aggressive? So we are killing the serotonin here with this drug, and which dose would do the better job? So it's a randomized study with testing two different doses of Zermelo. So we are very thankful for sponsors to kind of help us study that hypothesis. And very lastly, this is very, very recent news. We have collaborated with CCTG, the Canadian Cancer Treatment Group, and will be leading this large international cooperative group study where we will be testing, can we do re repeat Lutathera, right? So let's suppose patient got four doses of Lutathera, did great, 29 months later, the tumor starts growing again. It's only fair for my patient to ask me, hey doc, this drug worked great the first time. Can I get this again? Right now the FDA label only allows you four times. So we are at the mercy of the insurance for them to approve it. They can say, no, 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 you are doing off label. It's not approved beyond four doses. And that's very tricky and sad situation. So what we are trying to do here is trying to treat the patients or we call it net retreat. Um, and uh, I actually came up with that name. Uh, so isn't that cool? So, so net retreat is at the time of progression, those patients who benefited from the first round of Lutathera, we're going to repeat two more doses and compare it to patient, I don't like placebo. All my patients should get something. So we are going to give Avrolimus, which is an FDA approved treatment with a proven track record. And we will see if the drug works, if it works, then we are hopeful that we have enough data to convince insurances um, that this is a, a legitimate approach. With that, I'd like to thank you guys.